Hey, YouTube Texas Blades here. We're working on a uh, friend of mine's knife today. It's a. Uh, I want to say it's either 400 or 440 stainless steel, something like that. 400 series. It's I don't know a piece of stainless he had and a pattern I drew, and he really wanted it out of stainless. So I told him I would do it. And this is the first time I've ever worked with stainless. But today's video is going to be all about sanding. Uh, we're not going to do too much grinding. I just want to show you a couple different kinds of sandpapers we use and things of that nature. We always start off with 60 grit, and we don't buy expensive sandpaper. I don't. I don't buy ceramic sandpaper or anything like that. I buy just regular old-fashioned sandpaper. And I wanted to show you a good way to save money is buy these belts. These belts are huge. They're uh, they're actually for a, a jet sander, a really big one. Uh, I don't know how wide they are, but uh, one, two, three, four, probably. I don't know, five inches wide or something like that. Four to six, somewhere in there. Anyways, we buy these huge rolls uh, of these, and we probably get ten of them, and you pay a hell of a lot less than you would pay for that much material in this type of sandpaper. So, that's a good way to save money on your supplies, is, is to, you know, just make your own, and we use it, or I use it, rather, with this sand block right here, this little palm sander. Just stick it in there and fold it around, cut it to size, whatever. And when I do all my sanding on my knives, I don't sand with this on my knives. I turn my knife onto it, and this is how I do all my sanding on my knives. And we start with a 60 grit, and then this is just all I have to show right now. I bought these at Lowe's on uh, clearance for like five bucks. They were dirt cheap, so I bought a couple cases of them. But this is 120 grit, and this is what we go to afterwards. And we have some regular that we use, but this works as well. And just same concept, just keep your knife in one direction, keep it straight, keep it flat, and run it across it like so after you do the 60 grit and get it you know all uniform you want it to look all the same it's gonna look scratchy on a uh, 60 grit it's even gonna look scratchy on uh, 120 but a lot less than the 60 grit will look it, it'll look a lot you know a lot finer scratches and then we move up to uh, 220 grit and this kinda gets it you know all the little scuffs out and all the little marks out of it and when we're done with that, we use this little pad to buff them out. Uh, my buddy uses uh, big machines to do everything. I'm learning how to do everything by hand. Um, I like working with my hands often. Uh, if you've seen other videos I've done on my other channel, Rando Survivor, then you can see that, you know, I had uh, two or three pretty big chainsaws. One of them was like a 22 inch or something, really nice chainsaws, and I was out there cutting trees down by hand, and it's because I like to work with my hands. I find it therapeutic, so not just that, but the guy who's teaching me everything I know, uh, he did everything by hand for the first couple years, and he wants me to learn the same way he learned, so it's understandable. But this, this pad right here, it has a really coarse side on it, and then it has a really fine side on it, so we just, again, same concept, run it like this. And if you don't have one of these palm, sand, palm sanders, I'll teach you a little trick I use. Because I don't always use that. And I don't have it handy right now for some reason. But a mouse pad, uh, you know, something for your computer. Uh, take a mouse pad and flip it upside down in that pad will actually hold the sandpaper in place, especially this stuff. That that's that's how I use these. I put them on a mouse pad and these backs are like almost like a velcro. It actually sticks to the mouse pad and allows me to not have to hold the sandpaper while I'm working with my knife on it. I can just same concept. And it gives you a little bit of padding underneath it so you don't you know you don't want sandpaper on a hard surface and then work on it because then you're just wearing places down that you shouldn't be 
uh, you want something soft under there so you're working it across and it's actually divoting in that uh, rubber mat or whatever and working all the sides the uh, same angles and getting you a nice uh, flat surface to shape these to get my bevels and everything uh, on my file knife on a uh, the rando survivor channel you'll see that I use a bench grinder when I'm working with somebody else's I, I don't want to go with a bench grinder just because I do let that uh, grinder get away from me sometimes so this is what I use just four and a half inch uh, grinding disc and I try to you know get my bevel as close as possible with this as I can get as much material out as I can with this without going too deep and then I come back with one of these and again this is 60 grit sandpaper this is just a sanding wheel and uh, it works fine and it, it saves a lot of time you know if you're doing everything by hand you could cut your bevel on just this but it would take you forever so I do cut them out with an angle grinder and then come back and, and shape them with the sandpaper because uh, I can't get my bevel straight with an angle grinder you can see like right here it goes up a little bit so we're gonna have to work that out a little bit and I'll just I'll get my sandpaper right here uh, I'll show you another little trick for that you just take a little pencil and make sure you got the eraser you know again you want something soft back there and I'll work that one little spot just like that until I get it you know evened out as much as I can before I come back with this and try to even it out all the way across so that that works for that little stuff or you know if you have a fine file you can use a file but uh, after I do this I usually use a file before I start sanding and get everything off that I see uh, by hand and then I come back and smooth everything out with the sandpaper. The sandpaper is not really for shaping it's just for uh, you know smoothing everything out and then we'll come back with the buffing pad and, and buff it all out and make it shiny and I'll show you it, it you can see that up here is pretty rough just just that little bit of time on there is taking quite a bit of it out so these pads do work well and I've, I've done ran four knives through this thing and it's still in great condition and you can see I cut off just a little corner there because it's foam inside of it and then I can run my blade across the foam to just clean it off a little bit and, and see what I have it makes it a lot easier and these right here uh, this is like a sharpening stone almost and it hooks up to a drill uh, I haven't used it so I don't know what it'll do uh, maybe we'll test that out on, on a file knife I don't want to I don't want to put it on this piece of stainless and you know mess it up and then have to start all over so well there you have it that that's exactly what we use uh, really nothing else you know if it's a really dirty piece of steel we may go over it with a wire wheel one time something like that but that's about it uh, this is all the sanding equipment I own right now and I do have a belt sander that that I can use but I was using it and uh, the sparks hitting uh, the plastic inside the you know the top of the sandpaper uh, it, it actually caught fire it, it was spitting out smoke and, and the wind the air from the belt turning was keeping it going and actually igniting the plastic in there so if, if you're gonna do that I suggest you get a really good uh, hand sander, belt sander, something with possibly a metal, uh, uh, some kind of cover in there or something to, you know, metal on metal is fine, but metal on plastic, plastic doesn't go well. You know, you got 
hot red sparks flying at it, it it's not going to go over well so I suggest you either buy a knife making uh, grinder, uh, belt sander, combo you can pick them up from Harbor Freight for about 60 bucks. We actually ordered one already. I'm just, I'm not using it. And when I go to use it, I'll, I'll have to learn on his equipment. Then I'll come back and I'll be doing it on my equipment. So for now, we're just going to hand sand everything and hand shape everything. So uh, I hope some of this was helpful. We're going to have uh, another tips video coming out soon. Uh, on using the angle grinder to actually shape your bevel and all that good stuff we'll come back with a piece of 1095 and start removing all the excess out of it and show you how i go about doing all that so thanks for watching youtube